Chairman. Thanks, Senator Rono. Senator Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Judge, for joining us. Uh, Judge Nathan, in 2000, you wrote a law review article. And in that law review article, you wrote, quote, nearly all federal and state courts agree that the Second Amendment does not guarantee an individual private right to bear arms <coughs> unrelated to the state's right to maintain a militia. In, in light of um, the uh, Supreme Court's ruling in Heller, do you want to recant that statement? Or? Senator, that was well before Heller. The Supreme Court held in Heller that there's an individual right to bear arms. In the McDonald case, concluded it's a fundamental right incorporated to the states. If I have a Second Amendment case or any case that raises that question, I will fully um, implement those decisions. Okay. Now, at the time you wrote it in 2000, you said nearly all federal and state courts agree on that point. Um, was that the case? I mean, w w was there consensus on it, or was it that um, not many courts had ruled on it in the first place? Senator, so that was my um, that was my law review note that I wrote as a law student. I um, uh, I believe that was the consensus, but you're right, very little. I th and I think I noted, it's been a long time, Senator, since I looked at that article, but I believe I noted that there hadn't been um, much judicial attention to that question since the Supreme Court's decision in the Miller case, but I also noted that academics and legal scholars were questioning that analysis, which ultimately is what the Supreme Court held in Heller. Okay. Um, now, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about your 2019 Everytown decision, uh, when you seem to have disregarded the Supreme Court's uh, decision in Tennessee Wine and Spirits Retailers Association versus Thomas. Um, and in that case, uh, the, the Supreme Court had, of course, established the rule that, it, that, that a later adopted provision takes precedence over an earlier conflicting provision of equal stature. Um, do you regard yourself as having departed from that? Senator, um, the only issue raised by the ATF in that case, uh, the Second Circuit said actually that I got right. It was what ATF had argued was that the prior provisions hadn't been impliedly repealed by complete revision. Um, Second Circuit said I got that right. It, ex it says expressly it exercises its discretion to hear an argument that ATF hadn't made below, and it was on that basis that it reversed. I like to hope and think I would have gotten it right had it been raised before me, but it, but it wasn't. You know, Judge Menashe, writing for the Second Circuit, um, reverse your grant of summary judgment in, in every town. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, and did so based on clearly established precedent. So uh, why didn't you rely on Supreme Court precedent in that case? Senator, I, I considered the argument that had been raised before me. Um, I did my best to analyze that. The Second Circuit said I got that right, but um, it did, as Judge Menashe said, in the decision, exercise the circuit's discretion to consider the issue um, that hadn't been raised before me and decided on that. On that. Right. Well, the discretion meaning um, I mean, there, there was an obligation to follow Supreme Court precedent. Absolutely, and, and that is my obligation, of course. Um, tell me about your approach to reading statutes. How do you go about the, the task of statutory construction? Senator Lee, you start with the text of the statutory provision. Um, you see if it's clear and unambiguous. If it is, that's the end of the matter. You apply that clear and unambiguous language. Um, of course, you look to Supreme Court and, Se and Second Circuit precedent for any um, precedent that guides interpretation of the provision. If there is ambiguity, you look to the um, canons of construction as indicated by the Second Circuit and the Supreme Court. You apply those canons of construction uh, and the like. Do states have a legitimate interest in ensuring the integrity of their voter registration rules? Yes. Should illegal immigrants be allowed to cast votes in state and local elections? Senator, that uh, first question I can answer because the Supreme Court has said um, that the state does have that interest. 
On the next question, um, that is an issue that's a policy question that would be inappropriate for me as a, as a sitting court judge or nominated the Second Circuit to weigh in on. I can assure you if I have litigation that raises that question, I will consider carefully any relevant Supreme Court and Second Circuit of precedent and apply, apply it faithfully. Does a state or a local government have a constitutional um, uh, a, a source of authority upon which to decide to either um, does a, does a state have constitutional authority to decide to limit the voting franchise to legal citizens? And alternatively, is there a constitutional right uh, of one who is not a citizen to vote in an election in the United States? Senator, that's, those are not questions I've ever had uh, analysis for in any litigation that I've considered. If it were to come before me, I can assure you I would follow the Constitution, Supreme Court and Second Circuit precedent, and, uh, and reach a conclusion as mandated by that authority. I see my time's expired. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thanks, Senator Lee. Senator Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Judge. Thank you for your time. Um, 